actually on the day of WBC 2014, you know, um, Craig Federici gets on stage, does a whole, you know, what's new in iOS, yada, yada, yada. And then we have something amazing, this new Swift thing, rapturous applause. And then you come on stage to show for the very first time live Swift code running in a playground on stage with millions of folks watching at home, most of whom are not developers, quite frankly, watching this thing live on stage. That must have been extraordinary. What does it feel like getting on stage to that kind of environment? Uh, it was extraordinary, uh, both good and bad. Uh, so on the one hand, it was the culmination of a huge amount of work. Um, in, in particular, the so Swift was a long-term project, but the, the last year of its development was a lot of work and by a lot of really good people and it was very stressful a lot of ambiguity and so getting there was huge um, mm -hmm. on the other hand um, so Paul you, you may you may remember that beta 1 was not perhaps the most stable creation ever I don't know if that's maybe maybe I'm misremembering that <laughs> and so the uh, demo was of beta 1 the demo was in Playgrounds. The demo used this entirely brand new, com complicated technology stack going from LDB to Playgrounds, Xcode visualization, all of this stuff. And let's just say the ramp up towards that was not super smooth. It turns <laughs> out that that was actually really hard. And, um, and kudos to Tim. He did not actually throttle me and kick me off stage during practice, but it was pretty close. And um, so it was quite stressful. But, um, but, on the, on the other hand, just getting there was a huge relief, and um, I, I don't think that I'm the world's best public speaker, so that also put some pressure on you. But the the day I, the the moment I walked off stage, it was just very much relief. It's like we we did it, we made it. Uh, the world's excited. Let's see what happens, and then it's it's time to see you know were you right, were you wrong about this whole premise of the world would like to see a new thing, right? And and then. Uh, that was that was a very interesting and very very exciting time, um, and I think that the developer reaction was just incredible. It was really great to see that both both the positive and the negative, because of course there's a lot of people that were very, um, what's wrong with Object C? It's awesome. I've invested a lot into learning this. There's a whole new thing, and so now my experience is being invalidated, and I'm a newbie just like everybody else. And so there's that side, but there's also people that, um, particularly post 1.0, the the final release of 1.0, we got a lot of positive feedback about, um, you know, I never would have gotten into programming where I tried Objective C, it was too hard, and now now I feel like I can do things and I understand how it works, and and that that was just fantastic. There are several hundred folks in the chat saying thank you so much for your work. By the way, uh, here is one. Uh, who, who goes by the name Swifty McSwiftface, um, who says, I would never have ent entered development without it. And that's remarkable. I think a lot of folks feel that way because it changed the landscape of what we can do and it lowered the barrier to entry as well because, you know, for start with the square brackets and yeah. semicolons and parentheses and stars, sure. zoop, they've all gone. And suddenly it makes it easier for everyone to get involved. So it was, it's a remarkable change for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I look at that in two ways, one of which is I'm really happy that Swift is more accessible, and so new kinds of people, new kinds of ideas are able to be realized, right? Because that's one one of one of the things with um, with technologies that are they have a high learning curve is that you exclude a lot of really good people from getting in the door, and therefore the world is excluded from their inventions, right? And I don't think that's that's a good thing. I think it's much better to to bring in as many people as you can, and I think we've talked about this before that. That the community aspect is really, really important. On the other hand, there's another aspect of this, which is um, Swift and this idea of uh, progressive disclosure of complexity makes it so you can get in, but there's no ceiling to what you can do. And mm. many, many easy to learn systems or easy to learn languages, um, it, they make the the starting the starting point really easy, but then you get to the point where it just doesn't scale, or you, you know you can't you can't do something real, or you can't do um, you can't get to uh, the next domain over, right? It's really optimized. You know, MATLAB is really good at one kind of work, but you want to build a mobile app with it, and you can't do that, right? And so, and so, one of the nice things about Swift and the design point was that you can get in, and then as you develop your expertise, you can get more and more sophisticated. You can learn more of the power user features. You can take it with you as you go on your career to different places. And so, I hope that that is actually one of the 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 longest biggest impact things because you can take Swift and it can be useful in many different ways. Yeah, I, I think mentally we'd all, at least certainly I would, struggle to imagine everyone can code Objective-C edition. 
um, because the barrier will be just harder, higher to get to that point to explain to students who are. I mean, like my my daughter started at I think five or six years old doing Swift Playgrounds. She loves it, and and you know, moving yeah. that bite character around. I cannot imagine that in Objective C because it, there's so much explanation just to get the first few lines of code to work. You know. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, uh, so I, I'm a huge. Incidentally, I'm a huge fan of Objective C. Just recently, a history of Objective C got published by the the Hopple Conference, the History of Programming Languages. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I highly, I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested. Um, but Objective C, the th the thing about Objective C is that it is a beautiful thing. It just comes from a different era, right? It came from the early '80s. It came from a world of extreme resource constraints, right? And so it makes perfect sense to take C and then put objects on top of it, right? And that putting objects on top of it was very hard. Nobody had done that before. And so there's a lot of open questions about what is the right or wrong way to do things. There's no community at the time. And so it was like Objective C was an amazing leap forward for its time. But, you know, Swift came from a different era, right? Starting in 2010, you could look around at a much wider range of languages. Objects weren't new anymore. There were other, other new ideas, functional programming, other things like that were, on, were much more on the scene. And so Swift could draw from the ex experience of all these different things. And, um, and by being a clean slate design instead of being a, an extension on top of C, like, that really enabled a lot of design space that Objective-C couldn't explore. Definitely, yeah.